In the big black chair later, a comedian, newsreader, an actor and CBBC presenter. Celebrity mastermind at 5.45. But now on BBC One, it's all about the final score. He was one of the heroes of the afternoon. Uh, applause from the away supporters. Yeah. The latest score is when we go through the pressure. John Terry's tears, we all remember. Good afternoon and welcome to Final Score. It's the final Saturday of 2012, a year of ups and downs for a number of teams, and that's continued today. Dion Dublin and Mark Bright have been with me on the red button, keeping their eye across all matches. And what an afternoon it has been, as they will attest in just a moment. But let's bring you right up to speed with what's been going on in the Premier League so far today. Well, the lunchtime kickoff was at the stadium of light. John O'Shea put the Black Cats ahead, but a Carlos Coelho own goal and Aaron Lennon's fine winner set Spurs smiling down the M1 with all three points. Villa are on their knees. Paul Lambert said it was a must win, but now it's Aston Villa nil, Wigan three. That's 15 goals conceded in less than three games. Ramis, Boyce and Coney, the scorers for Wigan. Fulham won, Swansea two, Danny Graham pounced acrobatically and Jonathan de Guzman finished coolly by the Thames but Ruiz nicked one back for Fulham. Manchester United are leading West Brom by a goal to nil. It is finely balanced at Old Trafford. The pitch yes. is boggy and it's tight. Gareth McCauley's early own goal is the difference there. West Brom hit the bar not long ago. I think Norwich have just got another one. So the current scoreline there would be Norwich 3, Manchester City 4. Literally, that's just happened. We'll go there in a second, though, and I'll tell you all about the goals in a moment. Just let me tell you that Dzeko has got a hat-trick. He started. He's wanted to start up front for Manchester City. He has today. He's given his manager a hat-trick, but they have just that one-goal lead now. Reading 1, West Ham 0. The Royals desperate for a win. An uncommon error from James Collins let Pavel Pograbniak in for uh, an opener in the first few minutes of the game, and that's the way it stands. And it's Stoke 2, Southampton 3. The Potters are usually shoddy in defence, but still fighting very hard for a point, you think, from this one, if they can keep going. But Southampton, one point worth, 3-1 up. OK, let's get further details on all those games. We're going to start at Carrow Road. Andrew James got plenty to tell us about. Well, so many different things to tell you, Gabby, but briefly, it is Norwich City 3, Manchester City 4. Manchester City, who wanted more goals from their strikers, started with Dzeko today and he's got a hat-trick. Two of them coming in the first five minutes. Norwich pulled it back to 2-1 with a Pilkington free kick and then had Nasri also back in the side today, sent off for headbutting Bassong just before half-time. Aguero ad, uh, added then to the Man City lead, making it 3-1 just after half-time, before Russell Martin pulled it back with a header from a corner. At that stage, Norwich 2, Manchester City 3. But then Dzeko completed his hat-trick to give Manchester City a 4-2 lead with their 10 men. But just a few moments ago, from a corner that Hart failed to deal with, Martin got his second goal of the game, deflecting it into the Manchester City net. So, Norwich City 3, the 10 men of Manchester City 4. It ain't over till it's over. <laughs> Let's go to Old Trafford and Manchester United hanging on with that 1-0 lead, Damien Johnson. It feels such a long time ago since that goal was scored. Yeah, ages ago, early in the first half. We've had none of the excitement of Boxing Day, but uh, United still just about getting the job done, courtesy of that own goal you mentioned by Gareth McCauley. He could do nothing about uh, Ashley Young's uh, cross from the left-hand side, drilled straight at him. Ben Foster has kept the score down with two fine saves to deny Ashley Young and Antonio Valencia. Van Persie is on as a sub as United have wobbled occasionally in this second half. It's a boggy pitch. We had a pitch inspection, two in fact, before play uh, got underway. Uh, Albion hit the bar through McCauley, but the referee uh, had already blown up for an infringement. United just, you sense, hanging on a little bit. 1-0 they lead. Let's go to Villa Park. Paul Lambert said this was a must-win game. Two sides at the wrong end of the table. It's going all horribly wrong for Villa today, Ivan Gaskell. Oh, it sure is. Uh, a little more than ten minutes left. And, you know, the Queen once had hers. Now, surely this, Aston Villa's Anas Horribulus, ending as it began with a week like no other. Fifteen goals conceded without reply in seven 
devastating days that's plunged them into real crisis at the foot of the Premier League. Ramos set Wigan rolling inside three minutes. Boyce and Kone found it all too easy to deepen Villa's misery soon after the break. Villa's ship continues to sink at an alarming rate. Wigan heading above them and out of the bottom three tonight. They comfortably lead 3-0 here. Well, Stoke have been the form team Southampton. If they take three points away from the Britannia Stadium, Will Perry will be doing something that very few teams have done of late. Yeah, but they absolutely deserve their lead still at the moment, Gabby. It's uh, Stoke 2, Southampton 3. It's been the most remarkable match. We've got 11 minutes left here at the Britannia. Stoke are down to 10 men as well. Stephen and Zonzi showing a straight red card for what Mark Clattenburg thought was a stamp on Jack Cork. It's been all Stoke the last five or ten minutes with, uh, like I say, ten minutes just to, to play here. And uh, Southampton, three goals. Uh, they've come from uh, Ricky Lambert, from uh, Jay Rodriguez and an own goal from Andy Wilkinson. Stoke's goals from Kenwin Jones and uh, Matthew Upson. But this could be possibly Stoke's first defeat here at the Britannia Stadium since February. They've been on a 16-match unbeaten run. Is that coming to an end? Stoke 2, Southampton 3. Well, if Southampton can take three points and Reading at the moment leading at the Majeski, Jackie Oatley can take three points. All the pressure on QPR, you feel. This would be a massive win for Reading. It would. They're really hanging on, though. That early goal by Pavel Pogrebniak seems a long time ago. He scored as it was after a dreadful back pass by James Collins. But Reading have only really had two other clear-cut chances since, and those both in one go. Karachan hitting the underside of the bar in the second half. Kebe off target with a rebound. But West Ham just now going so close to an equaliser. Sub Maiga denied just now right in front of goal from Vaz Tay's cross. A Reed's header earlier was tipped over by Federici. He again saved from substitute Collison. But this is such a bad tempered match. Uh, the referee, Michael Oliver, with almost an impossible job trying to work out who the aggressor is in various feuds. Reading 1, West Ham 0. Thanks, Jackie. Let's go to Craven Cottage. Fulham trailing Swansea two goals to one. Tony Husband watching this one. And this is uh, a game, Gabby, that really has come alive in the second half. Fulham 1, Swansea 2 is the scoreline. And with those other scores around the country as well, you imagine Fulham looking over their shoulders a little bit. One win in 11 coming into this game. They were two down early in the second half. Danny Graham had given Swansea a half-time lead with an excellent finish from close range. A really messy second, which came against the run of play, really. A mix-up between Stockdale and Hangeland at the back allowed de Guzman to place his finish into the far corner. Uh, very comfortable indeed. So 2-0 and uh, Fulham really staring down the barrel at that point, but they stormed back. The wind and the rain blowing behind them. Ruiz turning in after Berbatov's header had hit the crossbar. Uh, Ruiz certainly has been Fulham's best player on the day. Berbatov's put the ball in the net again, uh, but he was ruled off side correctly uh, by the assistant referee. Good last eight minutes in prospect and Swansea holding on at the moment to a 2-1 lead. What a comeback on the cards at the Riverside Stadium since then. We last spoke to you, Paul Addison. Blackpool got a second. I understand they could potentially be about to equalise. Well, they've just missed the penalty, Gabby. Incredible. Tom Ince, the penalty saved by Jason Steele, diving away to his right-hand side. It wasn't struck as powerfully as Ince would have liked, I don't think. But Blackpool have battled back well into this game. They've just won another corner. Borough were 3-1 ahead. And then Blackpool pulled another goal back. Corner wasn't cleared. Chris Basham hammered it home. It's the home side that are under pressure now as Blackpool finally come to life. But Ince misses the penalty. So Borough still lead by three goals to two. Managerless Blackburn Rovers were 2-0 up at Oakwell, Seth Bennett. But as you can see there, it's gone through the video printer. Barnsley have pulled one back. Stephen Dawson, the score of what could be a crucial goal, driving the ball in from the edge of the box with his left foot into the top corner. Fine finish. Maybe that will lift the mood of apathy here at Oakwell. Remember, in the first half, Josh King and Ruben Rashina giving Blackburn Rovers a half-time 2-0 lead. Could be an interesting last 15 minutes, this one. And it could also be at the Reebok, although Bolton now have extended their lead. They were 1-0 down at the Reebok, Steve Wyeth. Yes, Bolton deservedly ahead in this contest of two of the pre-season favourites for promotion, but desperate for a win to get them back into contention. And it's Keith Andrews with the latest goal from the penalty spot, his third in three from the penalty spot. Coldwell adjudged to have handled and Andrews coolly, calmly into the top corner to make it 3-1. Zigic did have Birmingham ahead but Alonso equalised Chung Yong Lee with the moves like Messi to burst into the penalty area and finish from the tight angle made it 2-1 and now Keith Andrews goal means it's Bolton 3 Birmingham 1
And let's go to the Valley. Mark Bishop, uh, since we last spoke, an equaliser there. It certainly is, uh, Gabby. Charlton Athletic won, Derby County won. Derby right back in this wonderful, wonderful game with substitute Jamie Ward scoring from the penalty spot after Michael Morrison was red carded for bringing down Paul Coote. Stonewall penalty. Charlton had uh, gone ahead with a real rocket from Danny Haynes and then Bradley Pritchard uh, hitting the crossbar, the ball hitting the underside of the bar. Did the ball go over the line? The uh, fans thought so, but the referee uh, gave absolutely nothing. Terrific game. Derby have just had six successive corners. They're throwing everything at Charlton, but it's Derby. It's Charlton 1, Derby County 1. Thank you, Mark. Let's go to Jason Mohammed at the Cardiff City Stadium. Whatever happened today, Cardiff were going to be top at the start of 2013, but things going quite well for them today. Yes, they are, Gabby. They may well be on top of the championship, but Millwall are on top here and have been for the past 60 minutes or so. James Henry, Millwall's best player by far, should have scored when clean through on goal. Darius Henderson has had three great chances. Yet again, Cardiff City's goalkeeper David Marshall is keeping the league leaders in it. Rudy Gasted's second goal of the season was a fine one, but Gabby Gabby, they really need a second goal. Millwall very much still in this game. 1-0 to Cardiff City. Thanks, Jason. Let's go to Easter Road. Celtic trailing there. Ian Turner. Seven minutes left here, and a great seven minutes there'll be, I suspect, because it's been a good second half. Celtic with all the possession, all the pressure. Hibbs defending resolutely, defending really well. A magnificent save a moment ago from Ben Williams in the Hibbs goal. It was a hooper shot, wicked deflection, instinctive reaction save from Williams. Means that the score stays at Hibbs 1, Celtic 0. Horrible, isn't it? Let's go to the Moss Rose. It's a second round FA Cup replay between Macclesfield and Barrow. The prize is Cardiff. Juliet Farrington, it looks like it's going to be Macclesfield. Yeah, Macclesfield well on their way to meeting Cardiff next weekend. 4 1, they lead Barrow right now. They boss the second half. Chris Holroyd with his second of the afternoon after Matthew Barnes Horner made it 3 3 1, Macclesfield. Holroyd looking to secure Macclesfield's place in the third round and they lead Barrow by four goals to one. Where do we start then in our up sum of what we've seen this afternoon? Uh, perhaps we should start at the bottom, if you like, and, and a team that are very much sinking at the moment. Villa. Aston Villa, yeah. yeah. Having a bit of a nightmare. You know, when people talk about a game being stretched, you know, what they mean is that the players are all over the place, their shape's gone. And, you know, I'm watching Wigan and they're just using the whole of the pitch to make Villa run as much as possible. And they look like they could score again. Villa have had another absolute... The stadium's empty. I'm looking at the screens now. People are just leaving, you know, the top and two, the main the stand. And 20 minutes or so. Just empty and there's, there's hardly anybody there, you know, to their standards. And we're going to play very well today, but they haven't had much to beat. Yeah. It's, a, it's a young team. It's an inexperienced team. Yes. Wigan have been here. They've done this before. They don't panic until end of March. Do they? <laughs> I, think, I think this is the third season in a row they've been in the bottom three at this stage of the season. They played their way out of trouble at the end of last season. were absolutely fantastic. Today, they've been brilliant. Taruna Kony scored a, mm. an exceptional goal, but... Dion said it was, you know, it was such poor, poor defensive display. What's it now? 15 goals or something without yeah. reply? Three games. And, you know, you really games. worry for them yeah. now because the experienced players are injured. Um, 23, 24, 25-year-olds, players from the championship have been signed for Villa. And, um, you know, well, the crowd have just left in their droves after the third goal. And Norwich have just hit the uh, side netting as well. What a great game, speaking. I mean. You, you don't get a goal for that, <laughs> just, I'm afraid, Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a goal inside the net at the city ground. Mark Webber. Alex McLeish's managerial debut. The Big Ek will be saying oh, Ek now. Forest 1, Palace 2. Glenn Murray with a header on the left post, unmarked, but it's been quagmire-like conditions. It's hard to play the beautiful game on an ugly pitch. Forest 1, Palace 2. Uh, let's talk a little bit about I mean, that, that one. Norwich obviously still on the attack, thinking they can get a point from this, and quite rightly, because it's 3-4 well, with, with a man well, down. Well, Nas Nasri got sent off. There was a, Nas Coming together, Basson with a really mm. rash challenge. Nasri and Basson got up. They Basson sort of in, initiated it. He sort of he leant forward with his head, touched Nasri. Nasri then had a little swipe. That was enough for the assistant, flagged, the referee sent him off. And then you're thinking, what a chance Norwich have. But, you know, zeko has been in fine form and you said he's been begging for a chance to start. Uh, Man City haven't scored as many goals as they, they normally do, but they've usually, I think, only 16 goals conceded. They've got a tight defence today. Mm been all over the with, place. With Man City being as good as they are, I mean, the players that they have, even with 10 men, they look like they've still got yes. 11, 11 men on the pitch. And Norwich are actually, they're not chasing it. Norwich are being, you know, they're keeping their shape. They're trying to get back into the game. And Norwich are playing like a, a, a Paul Lambert Norwich, you know, and they're, and they're keeping going and they're working hard. But Chris hutton has got this team believing in what they're, what they're doing. And they are actually standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Man City and might still nick a point. They might nick a point. I'd say they're looking at three defeats in a row here, though, Norwich, and they won't have a better opportunity to beat Man City. 
down to ten men for the majority, mm. and they've given it a go. But their last season it was six one, wasn't it? They had they were hammered by. They the lost last six season. one. They lost five one to City last season. Eleven goals. OK, let's go to the Riverside Stadium. Is it the equaliser, Paul Addison? It isn't. It's Middlesbrough 4, Blackpool 2. Maybe the Borough fans can breathe a little easier, but the way this afternoon's gone, I wouldn't take that for granted. Beautiful goal, by the way. Adam Reach, one of the Borough youngsters, coming off the bench in the second half, drifted in from the right-hand side and finished with his left foot from around about 20 yards out. Borough 4, Blackpool 2. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Manchester United today. Uh, it's by, by no means the, the kind of encounter we saw no. about today against Newcastle United. It's not exactly been the most attractive of games. Has no, it drawn it's, your it... eye to it? But at the moment, they're hanging on with 1-0. With yeah. Let's talk about Fergie, though. Fergie watch. He's stirred yes. the pot of controversy and, you know... Put oh, a little... what a goal! Oh, they're not hanging on anymore. Let's not talk about it. Actually, <laughs> there are two goals at exactly the same time there. Let's do the one at Old Trafford first. Damien Johnson. <laughs> Fantastic goal from the substitute, Robin Van Persie. Uh, an absolute cracker into the top corner. He's a, a second-half substitute, as I say, rested today uh, as Welbeck and uh, Kagawa got a chance up front. But Van Persie has just fired a cracker into the top corner. The ball came to him on the edge of the area, just lurking rather unnoticed, I think it has to be said. Uh, how can you fail to notice him? Pick the ball up just inside the angle, cut inside, left foot, curled it past Foster, who's been brilliant, by the way. He's made four or five fantastic saves. But uh, United on the way to a 2-0 victory. Wow. I Who cares if he two. stirs the pot of controversy when his team is scoring <laughs> goals like that? Let's go, then, to the Stadium of Light. At this exact same time, I think it might just better it as a goal, Will Perry. Oh, my word. This is one of the most ridiculous games I've seen this season. Absolutely incredible. Stoke have huffed and puffed at 2-3 down for the last 10 minutes, and they've found their wolf, and his name is Cameron Jerome, 25 yards out. Peter Crouch laid it off to him, and he has smacked it into the top corner it's gone in off the top of the crossbar and they have the equaliser but with what two minutes I think to play here at the Britannia Stadium can Stoke even get a winner they've kept their unbeaten re home record intact they were going to look like losing that uh, they hadn't lost here since February 2-3 down Jerome saves it can they get a winner Stoke 3 Southampton 3 and do you know what that does it eases the pressure somewhat uh, for Paul Lambert because his team wouldn't be in the bottom three tonight so you know it was, it's been a terrible day, it's been a terrible week, but at least you're not in the bottom three as you head into the new year. Well, absolutely, but um, you have to say that Stoke um, have had Nzonzi sent off. They should have had a penalty, I think. Jerome appealed for a penalty a few moments ago, and then he's, he scores a worldie, an excellent strike outside the box, hits the bar and drops in. And you're thinking, Southampton go away to Stoke, of all places, and score three goals. And, and don't you, come away with the win. You don't come away with the win. <laughs> and, you know, that's got, that's got to hurt. OK, let's go to Ashton Gate. A bit of a route there, Hamish Marshall. It is. It's Bristol City 4, Peterborough 2. The latest goal coming from Peterborough. Dwight Gwayo scoring his seventh goal in six games. But the home side are on course to take the points in a game they really couldn't afford to lose. Paul Anderson and Sam Baldock had them two up at the break. And the points look like being secured thanks to Stephen McManus's header and a Baldock penalty. Peterborough will say, though, the moment when Lee Tomlin was sent off for raising an elbow in the first half, well, they'll say that was the key. We are just about to go into stoppage time. Bristol City 4, Peterborough 2. Let's go to the Reebok. Steve Wyeth are sending off. Yes, Birmingham 3-1 down and now down to 10 men. It's their goal scorer, Nikola Zigic. Sheer stupidity from him. Booked for trying to obstruct goalkeeper Bogdan as he cleared the ball. 30 seconds later, jumped into Tim Ream. Goalkeeper Simon Hooper had barely had time to rebutton his top pocket and he produced the second yellow, followed by red. Birmingham down to 10 men. Bolton 3, Birmingham 1. Are Reading going to hang on for this vital three points? The Majeski, Jackie Oatley. Well, they're into the final minute of added time. You can feel the tension around the place. Still Reading 1, West Ham 0. Reading, as you would expect, doing everything they can to eke out those last few seconds. One player leaving it for another to take the throw in, and it's been a very, very bad-tempered game. It's shocking that there have been no red cards, frankly. So many uh, decisions that have gone could have gone either way, and the referee having a very tough job. Any minute now, he'll blow his whistle, and Reading looks to be heading for their second victory only in 20 Premier League matches, 1-0. And still they're going at Carrow Road. Uh, that was a great run from Man City there, Andrew James. 
Yes, uh, Aguero denied by a save from Bun in the Norwich City goal. Not for the first time this afternoon, Gabby. Just reflecting on last season's score here. 6-1 to Manchester City. Seven goals then, seven goals again, of course, today. But Norwich City have really acquitted themselves well. They have lost uh, three on the trot, assuming it stays like this, as Mark was saying, which will be a concern to them. But really, Manchester City have found their goals with uh, Dzeko today with his hat-trick. And they probably will get the three points. We're three minutes into five of stoppage time here, Gabby. But uh, all sorts of questions still to be answered, I guess, in terms of City's uh, title credentials. It's still Norwich City three, Manchester City four, still playing. I imagine the boos are ringing out at Villa Park. The final whistle has blown. Ivan Gaskell has endured this, I think, more than in and the Majeski Stadium. And how big a three points will this prove to be? Is this a turning point, Jackie Oakley? Well, it could well be. And what enormous relief, as you would imagine, after the 1-0 victory, only their second League One of the season for Reading. West Ham's fifth defeat now in seven games. The only goal coming early on, James Collins' back pass, allowing Pavel Pogrebniak to score with a clinical finish. West Ham had various chances to equalise, but none better than an incredible miss late on by substitute... Baz Tay, a free header, four yards out. Somehow he nodded it wide. Collison and Reed also went close to equalising. Kerichan up the other end, uh, hitting the underside of the crossbar. A very feisty match. Seven yellow cards could easily have been a couple of reds. Reading one, West Ham nil. And all over at Old Trafford, Damian Johnson saw this one. Yes, this was a victory of the hard-fought variety for the Premier League leaders. An own goal from Gareth McCauley and a second-half firecracker from Robin Van Persie, enough to see them home. Uh, there was none of the uh, histrionics of Boxing Day in that 4-3 against Newcastle. McCauley could do nothing about Ashley Young's drilled cross from the left. It hit him and went into the net. United uh, found Ben Foster in the Albion goal in terrific form. Uh, brilliant saves denied Young, Van Persie and Welbeck. Albion had their moments coming on strong as United uh, sat back too deep in the second half. It was a heavy old playing service. Two uh, pitch inspections were needed by the referee before the get-go earlier on this afternoon. Uh, it was a grey, rainy afternoon lit up by Van Persie's goal and United victory, victorious. Thank you, Damien, to Craven Cottage now. And Swansea's impressive away form this season continues, Tony Husband. Yes, and impressive goals which have given them victory here at a windswept cottage. Uh, Danny Graham, 19 minutes in after Nathan Dyer's shot was parried in the air by David Stockdale in for Mark Schwarzer today. That was one. One became two seven minutes after the break. Jonathan de Guzman capitalising on a horrible interchange between Hangerland and Stockdale at the back again. Uh, he finished well. Uh, a very impressive... Uh, period of play that for Swansea who had had to cope with a strong start to the second half from Fulham who did rally that is the positive they'll take from this game Brian Ruiz by some way their best player pulled one back uh, Berbatov as well not given the service his t-shirts asked for today well he put the ball in the net uh, but he was ruled correctly offside after that Fulham well they went out with a whimper really one win in 12 for them some worrying times here for them but Swansea back to winning ways. Fulham won, Swansea two. Thanks, Tony. Let's go to the Britannia Stadium. The final whistle has blown. And on balance, would you say that's a fair scoreline, Will Perry? Oh, I think Southampton are, are going to feel absolutely devastated with this. I'd say they're unlucky. I mean, it's finished Stoke three, Southampton three. Action packed, six goals and a red car here at the Britannia. A Stoke's unbeaten home record, still intact though this season. As I say, Southampton so unlucky not to get that win away from home, that second winner of the season away from home. The visitors were ahead after 10 minutes through Ricky Lambert's tapping. Kenwin Jones equalised against his old club with a neat flick from close range just six minutes later. Jay Rodriguez put Saints back in front, uh, tapping in after uh, Robert Hood's clearance came off the crossbar. Nigel Atkins' side went 3-1 up through an Andy Wilkinson own goal. Then Matthew Upson pulled another back for Stoke, turning in a rebounded effort from Kenwin Jones. Uh, and Stoke went down to 10 men, a controversial moment. Stephen Inzonzi shown a straight red for what referee Mark Clatterberg deemed a stamp on Jack Cork. Cameron Jerome thought he'd got a late equaliser. That was ruled out for offside. Then no doubt about Jerome's leveller just a few minutes later. In the 90th minute, a beautiful 25-yard volley, uh, dipping in, came off the crossbar, over the line. Brilliant fight back from Stoke. It's finished 3-3. Thanks, Will. Let's go to Car Let's go to Easter Road, all over there. And Celtic have been defeated. Ian Turner.
Yes, Celtic sprint away from the chasing pack has been halted. Hibbs struck early and then defended with determination to record a rare victory over the champions. The goal scored by Griffiths in the eighth minute was superbly taken. Hibbs top scorer sprinting clear, rounding Forster and somehow finding the net from an extremely acute angle. Neil Lennon will certainly argue that Celtic deserve to win. Tomorrow's papers will remind him of a final score of Hibbs 1. Celtic nil. Thank you, Ian. Let's go to the Moss Rose, the second round replay between Macclesfield and Barrow in the FA Cup, of course, and Cardiff. The prize for the victors, Juliet Farrington has the story. And Cardiff will be at the Moss Rose next weekend because Macclesfield have won it 4-1. They've beaten Barrow, dominating the second half. Two more goals as well in the second half to wrap the replay up. Matthew Barnes-Horner, a stunning individual effort from him before Chris Horroy got his second of the afternoon to secure the visit of the championship leaders in the third round. Macclesfield deserve to go through. They've beaten Barrow by four goals to one. Thank you very much, Juliet. And to have your say on the day's football, don't forget you can join Robbie Savage and Darren Fletcher taking your calls over on BBC Radio 5 Live at six minutes past six, including Blackburn's global advisor, Chevy Singh. Perhaps you can cast some light on what's going on there. And 5 Live also have commentary on QPR against Liverpool tomorrow from four. Pressure now really on QPR with that big win for Reading, who've now put three points between them and bottom club QPR. In a moment, we'll have reaction to all of today's games from managers, players and a full check on the day's results first, though, with Mike West. And starting with the Barclays Premier League, the match between Arsenal and Newcastle United is an evening kickoff at 5.30. Aston Villa, nil. Wigan Athletic, three. Fulham, one. Swansea City, two. Manchester United, two. West Bromwich Albion, nil. Norwich City, three. Manchester City, four. Reading, one. West Ham United, nil. Stoke City, three. Southampton, three. And Sunderland, one. Tottenham Hotspur 2. The FA Cup with Budweiser second round replay, Macclesfield Town 4, Barrow 1. On to the Empire Championship, Barnsley 1, Blackburn Rovers 2 is a later score. Bolton Wanderers 3, Birmingham City 1. Brighton and Hove Albion against Watford, an evening kickoff at 5.20. Bristol City 4, Peterborough United 2. Burnley 0. Leicester City, 1. Cardiff City, 1. Millwall, 0. Charlton Athletic, 1. Derby County, 1. Huddersfield Town, 0. Sheffield Wednesday, 0. Hull City, 2. Leeds United, 0. Middlesbrough, 4. Blackpool, 2. Nottingham Forest, 2. Crystal Palace, 2. And Wolverhampton Wanderers, 0. Ipswich Town, 2. The Empire League 1, AFC Bournemouth 3, Crawley Town 0. Carlisle United 2, Bury 1. Colchester United against Swindon Town, match postponed. Leighton Orient 2, Walsall 1. Milton Keynes Dons 2, Coventry City 3. Oldham Athletic 1, Crew Alexandra 2. Portsmouth 1, Yeovil Town 2. Preston North End 0. Doncaster Rovers, 3. Sheffield United, 2. Hartlepool United, 3. Shrewsbury Town, 0. Brentford, 0. Stevenage against Notts County, match postponed. And Tramia Rovers, 1. Scunthorpe United, 0. The Empire League, 2. AFC Wimbledon, 0. Oxford United, 3. Aldershot against Torquay United, match postponed. Bradford City, 2. Rochdale, 4. Burton Albion, 2. Southend United, 0. Cheltenham Town against Bristol Rovers, match postponed. Chesterfield, 1. Morecambe, 1. Dagenham and Redbridge, 2. Port Vale, 3. Exeter City, 2. Barnet, 2. Fleetwood Town, 0. York City, 0. Gillingham against Northampton Town, match postponed. Plymouth Argyle, nil. Wickham Wanderers, one. And Rotherham United, four. Accrington Stanley, one. The Blue Square Bet Premier, the match between Braintree Town and Woking, was postponed. Dartford, one. Cambridge United, one. 
The games between Forest Green Rovers and Kidderminster and Hereford United and Newport County both postponed. Lincoln City won, Gateshead won. The matches between Luton Town and Ebbsfleet United, Mansfield Town against Grimsby Town and Nuneaton Town against Alfreton Town all postponed. Southport nil, Hyde won. Stockport County 2, AFC Telford United 2. And Wrexham 2, Tamworth 2. Into Scotland and the Clydesdale Bank Scottish Premier League. Dundee 1, Aberdeen 3. Hibernian 1, Celtic 0. Motherwell 2, Kilmarnock 2. The game between Ross County and Hearts match postponed. And St Johnston 0, Inverness Caledonian Thistle 0. The Iron Brew Scottish Division 1, Airdrie United 1, Partick Thistle 1. Falkirk 3, Dumbarton 4. Greenock Morton 4, Dunfermline 2. The match between Livingston and Hamilton Academical match postponed. Wraith Rovers 2, Cowdenbeath 2. The Scottish Division 2 are both 2, Albion Rovers 1. Air United 0, Allower Athletic 0. Forfar Athletic 3, East Fife 2. Stenhouse Muir 1, Queen of the South 3. And Stranra 0, Brecon City 2. The Scottish Division 3, Annan Athletic 2, Elgin City 0. Clyde 2, Berwick Rangers 1. Montrose 3, Stirling Albion 2. Peterhead 2, East Stirlingshire 0. And Queen's Park 0, Rangers 1. The Corbett Sports Welsh Premier, Llanethley 4, Carmarthen Town 2. And lastly, the Danske Bank Irish Premiership, Ballina Mallard 1, Crusaders 3, Ballymena United 3, Lisbon Distillery 3, Cliftonville 2, Dungannon Swifts 0, Glenavon 0, Linfield 3, Glentoran 5, Donegal Celtic 0, and finally Porterdown 2, Colrain 0. And one late result to tell you about. Managerless Blackburn Rovers got rid of Henningberg this week, have beaten Barnsley three goals to one in the championship game at Oakwell. Let's have a little look at the tables then. No change at the top of the Premier League. Leaders United remain seven points clear of City, but Tottenham have replaced Chelsea in third. The Blues are at fifth place Everton tomorrow. At the bottom, QPR still propping up the pile. They host Liverpool tomorrow afternoon. Wigan move out of the bottom three and Aston Villa were set to be plunged into it, but Stokes' late equaliser against Southampton spared them that fate. Let's have a look at the championship. The top three all won, so Cardiff go into the new year with a five-point advantage. Nottingham Forest move above Millwall in the only positional change in the top ten so far, with uh, just the late kickoff between Brighton and Watford to come. Bristol City are off the bottom courtesy of their win and defeats for Barnsley and Peterborough. Sheffield Wednesday inch a point further away from the relegation zone, while Inform Ipswich move above Birmingham City. To League One now, and Tranmere, the new leaders after beating Scunthorpe. Sheffield United slipped to second, a point behind because of that shot loss at home to bottom club Hartlepool. So Hartlepool at the bottom collects a rare three points, but their position doesn't change. Uh, the bottom nine remains as it was this morning. To League Two, Port Vale are league leaders for the first time this season, taking advantage of the fact that previous incumbents Gillingham had their game called off. Cheltenham's game was also postponed while Southend and Bradford both lost. At the bottom, AFC Wimbledon are now propping up the league. They slipped below Bristol Rovers, whose game was washed out because they've scored fewer goals. And Aldershot's game was called off. Plymouth lost, but Barnet earned an away point at Exeter. To the Blue Square Bet Premiership and no change at the top. Neither Grimsby nor Newport play today because of the heavy rain. At the bottom, it's as you were. Uh, just five games went ahead in the Blue Square Prem. And to the SPL. Celtic's run of five straight wins was ended by Hibernian, but their healthy lead at the top has been cut by just a point as Inverness and Motherwell can only draw. Uh, Dundee were the only sides in the bottom five to play today. They remain nine points adrift of the foot of the table. Let's talk a little bit uh, first in the Premier League about Aston Villa, I think. Um, horrible scenes when you see yeah. the crowd leaving 20 minutes before, 25 minutes before the end of the game, you know, and, and despondency there. What does Paul Lambert do now? 
Well, they, they took a hammering against Chelsea, and I, and I saw that eight, and then they went and lost again four, didn't they? Um, and what you're saying is try and, you know, try and let's get, build some confidence, let's try and keep a clean sheet uh, and go from there. You're playing at home. I think the crowd have been very patient with him. I think they've been behind him. But, you know, if you look at all the players that got out, Richard Dunn's out, Bent's out, Shea Given, Stylian Petrov, and then you're saying that, look at the players they've got rid of. Milner, Young, Barry, Downing, that's £70 million. They brought in, you know, like Westwood and um, a couple of players from the Championship. So, you know, you're replacing high-quality players with players from the Championship, and I think the crowd have feared this, what mm. might be happening now, and um, there, there's no question about there's a lack of confidence totally mm. in the team. Some of the goals are considered, the difference Gabby. today with Wigan was a side who, oh. who don't panic. They know how to get out of these situations. They've done it time and time before. And so today that composure was there, wasn't it, where all the shape was lost with Villa? Completely. They knew they were going to uh, Villa Park with a team that are, that are panicking at the moment. They don't really know how to get a win. Mm. They don't know how to... Uh, to be confident enough to get the ball to feet and take it under pressure. And they knew that, Wigan. They're very, very clever. And the manager just had them play in and just pick Villa off through Villa's bad play. It wasn't particularly good play from Wigan. Just Villa's bad play, left gaps. Wigan found the gaps and scored the goals. Aston you know, Villa have won six games in 2012. I mean, it's it's shocking. It really really is. And you know what, as well, Gabby, um, uh, Mr Lambert's been really, really protective of his side in his interviews and stuff. Yeah. But I think there comes a time when you have to say, hold it a minute. My players aren't doing it for me. You know, sometimes you've got to em embarrass your players to make them realise that, hold it, I'm asking you to do a job and you're not doing it. He has to take some of the, the blame. The young and experienced. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Still, but Gabby, they're, they're, that's the experience you've got to take on board. If you're not doing as I'm asking you, the, the manager has to take some, some, of the, some, of the, some of the blame. One minute, Brian. He has sorry. to take some, some, of the blame, some of the blame. But the players have got to stand up and say, listen, sorry, we're, we've been playing woeful, we've conceded too many goals, it's our fault as well. And nobody's done that yet. I think what you need as well is, you know, it, 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 you need experienced players mm. to look up to who give you the right information in the, this crisis times. I think we can all look back on our career and say you've had sound advice from, from some good senior mm. players. And at the moment, they haven't there got any, any good... There. There's no good senior Let's players. Let's see what January holds. Maybe Randy Lerner will be Half. looking into his pocket. OK, well, a team who've dipped into their pocket quite a bit over the last few years are still in touch in the title race. And certainly after today, the goal-scoring side of things is going a bit better. Uh, Roberto Mancini, Manchester City manager, of course, I'm referring to, saw his side win 4-3 at Carrow Road. He's talking to Andrew James. Roberto, congratulations, you've got the three points. Tremendous game for the neutral. What was it like for you? Oh, for me, I think that uh, we play fantastic football for 25 minutes. Uh, we decided to score three or four goals. And after sending off for Samir, I don't know why. Uh, I think that someone can explain me this. And uh, because the lineman was there, I don't know what is he. I don't know. And uh, after, with ten, 10 men, it's difficult. But uh, we continue to play. You score other two goals. We conceded uh, only on, on set pieces because uh, it was difficult. But uh, the guys play very, very well. Very, very well. Like in, in Sunderland. But this time we score. Did you ask for clarification at half time or full time about the sending off? I don't know. I don't know. The referee was there. I didn't see. The line men was very close, but I don't know, we, we, we saw the, the video, both players touch uh, his head. <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I can't understand that one lame man can uh, block in one game uh, like today. I think they should pay attention. And after, sometimes, I don't know if they changed the rules in the last uh, three or four months, uh, because when one player pass the ball to the keeper, the keeper can't save should explain also this, because I don't understand the football. This is incredible. I, I saw in the last four or five games incredible things. It's been an interesting week, hasn't it, uh, for referees <laughs> and uh, managers of Manchester clubs. But let's go speak to Steve Wilson, who's at Carrow Road for a match of the day. Uh, Steve, can you explain it to him? Can you, did you see anything more? And we saw different angles here in the studio. And, you know, if, if one party was more culpable than the other, then Nasri did appear to move his head back and go in as if he was going to headbutt him. Yes, and he also started it, Gabby, it has to be said. Um, I think that probably where Mancini is, it might have a case is that um, a, a yellow card was shown to Bassong for the challenge. Uh, it was a foul. Nasri went over, um, looked like he was about to pass out in pain and then suddenly sprang to his feet and stuck his forehead into Bassong's face. Bassong wasn't going to back off, but Nasri was the instigator. He was marginally the more aggressive of the two. You could argue 
that uh, Basson got a yellow card for the challenge and kind of participated in the rutting that was going on, if you like. So perhaps he was a little bit lucky to stay on the pitch. Norwich were fantastic today and uh, take a lot of credit for pushing Manchester City very close, albeit uh, that City had 10 men for so much of the game. But City have passed a big test today. Let's not get that wrong. Um, they could easily not have won today. They were pushed to the limit. They had to give everything today. They were absolutely brilliant at the start of the game. They clung on under a fantastic barrage from Norwich. I cannot tell you how good this game is. And there was one moment then when Mancini was referring to in the interview, which just might make a bit of sense. If, Javier, if I explain that Javier Garrido, under pressure, lofted the ball back towards his own goal, it was clearly a back pass. It was dropping over the goalkeeper and in, and Mark Bunn tipped it over the top of the crossbar. You cannot handle a back pass. That's what Mancini was unhappy about in that interview. One of the many things. Isn't it funny how he gets more and more Italian the more upset he gets? <laughs> and his team won. <laughs> and they scored goals. And yeah. Dzeko scored a hat-trick. And Dzeko's been crying out to start. So I, I guess on, on balance, he'll take a lot of positives from that performance. Yeah. Uh, but some frustration there. So, your team showed a lot of character you know, in the face of the, the, the red card. The red card, whichever way you look at it, I think it was a rash challenge from Bassong. Nasri spun round, stood up. They come together. Bassong then dips his head forward to touch Nasri. I think that engages Nasri. Nasri then swishes his head. I think that's what, that's what, the, that's what the assistant sees. He's deemed that as a headbutt. It, it, it's don't do it. It's that simple. And um, the red card. You, 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 Dion disagrees with me. But I can tell you now. I think Basson instigates the whole thing when he when he moves towards Nasri and leans down and puts his head together as if to say, "And what?" The, That's the, the message. The, the only reason I disagree is because the ta the challenge is rash. Oof. It's a free kick without a doubt, no problem at all. But he's on the floor rolling around first and foremost. Then he realizes. Then he gets up off the floor, goes towards Basson. I can't see how Basson was instigating. It's, it's, it's Nasri all the way, and I just think that the decision is the right one because you can't go heads yeah. to heads. If one goes, they both go. Simple as that. If one goes, it they both go. Simple as absolutely that. Absolutely brilliant game, though. You know, so much to talk about. Of you and, the, and you can see it all on match of the day, of course, uh, tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, now uh, their title rivals, although they have the uh, definitely have the offensive, don't they? At the moment, seven points in the lead, at Manchester United, and today their test was West Brom. They came through it, and Sir Alex Ferguson is talking to Damian Johnson. <clears throat> Sir Alex, 2-0 in the end, were you decent value for that? Well, I think the first half we were, I think that we played well in the, fir the first half, but I think they found it, and I thought that too, that the slowness of the pitch was really hot, heavy today, and playing on Wednesday night and then playing today, for some of them they found it hard, particularly Michael Carrick towards the end of the game, he was really running in, in memory, you know. But it's a good result because West Brom are a, a very re resolved, the team with great resolve, purpose, they know what they're doing, they all defended really well, and they were really hard to break down. I'm sure many people will take away the memory of a, of a great goal from Van Persie on a grey afternoon. Fantastic. He changed the game for us. When I brought him and Paul Scholes on, it settled us down, got a bit of composure back into the game, and every time the ball went to Robin, he turned on his defenders quickly. He was a real handful for them. Uh, let's go to Guy Mowbray, who's at Old Trafford for match of the day. Um, without wanting to be uh, dismissive, it wasn't one of the games that caught your eye all the time. It had a big competition for that guy, you'll understand today. The pitch looked like it was in uh, such bad nick that it kind of spoiled the game in a way. It didn't ever look like it, it flowed. Is, is that a, a fair assessment? Pretty much spot on, Gabby, yes. Um, United didn't play all that well today. I actually thought for the first half hour they did, and they were passing the ball around beautifully. I thought West Brom and Jalbin were going to get absolutely blown away. They got, a, they got a lucky start, if you like, with Ashley Young playing the ball against Gareth McCauley and in for an own goal. That was in just the ninth minute, and you thought, here we go. It's going to be a long day for West Brom, this. But then second half, as the pitch got worse, really cut up, the rain started again. Albion had a real go and played pretty well and looked for long periods as though they would get an equaliser. The difference came, the goal that won it, you just heard him being talked about. Robin Van Persie comes off the bench. We've seen any number of shots today in this game, and they've all been blocked. They've been defenders in strikers' faces, and nobody's found a way through. Van Persie took one touch, found the gap. It's like, it's like threading a needle. Unbelievable. A brilliant, brilliant finish, and points wrapped up. One of those classic holiday period games where the points were all that mattered, and, and United can save their pretty football for somebody else to get a steam rolling, I think. <laughs> Thank you very much, Guy. And you're not too wet, obviously, where you were sat, because it was a bit miserable, wasn't it, out there today, uh, many of the games in the Premier League. But that ray of light from Van Persie, you know, he finishes the year as a Manchester United player, started it as Arsenal's yeah. hero, and ends 2012 as undoubtedly one of the buys yeah. of the summer. 
Yeah, um, because, you know, what, one great season at Arsenal in eight, eight seasons and proved when he stays fit, he, he's, he's absolute quality. And he, it, the finish was beautiful, wasn't it? He, he, he wanted the ball, he demanded the ball, he received it back to goal, turned inside and just picked off a beautiful... But up until then, I'd just say, West Brom... You know, we're still in that game. Still in they that game. The, bar, the pitch they? was awful. I have to say that it had yeah. been raining Manchester. It was, it was always going to be a, a good he game is. of football. Wasn't yeah, it? it was always going to be a good game of football. But, you know, when Scholes comes on, and you know, Sir Alex just said it, he just calms it down. Scholes mm. gets it, plays it easy. RVP does all the pretty stuff mm. by putting the ball, tough, putting tough the ball in, the, in the back of the net, drops his right but shoulder. Before the goal, Scholes was about to take a shot, wasn't he? And then changed his I mind, to blocked, pass it, wasn't it, and. Yeah, well, it, well, he took it back, didn't he? And then, and then yeah. just passed it on to Arby. I mean, when sure. you bring on Robin Van Persie, I mean, what does that say? You know, you, you pick and choose the games. You, he tries to, like, negotiate his way through the, the busy mm. period of mm. resting people and playing people. And then you bring that quality onto the pitch. What, 17 goals this season? And, bad, you know, it? yeah, it, mm. it's a big difference. Indeed. OK, well, you can see that game and the rest of the Premier League today on Match of the Day. Alan Hansen and Martin Keown will look back at that. Uh, with Gary Lineker, 10.30, BBC One uh, for you. And then Colin Murray has highlights of Everton against Chelsea and QPR Liverpool on Match of the Day 2 tomorrow night, 10.25. And some bonus football for you on New Year's Day. Final scores on BBC Two from 4.30 and from 2.30 on the HD channel, Red Button and BBC Sport website. There's a Match of the Day that night as well at 10.25 with another dose on Wednesday night as well. We're working them hard over the festive period. Uh, but let's uh, go and speak to John Motson, who's been at uh, the Majeski this afternoon. And before we spoke on the red button earlier on, uh, Motty, and you said this is the game they have to win, Reading. They did it, a slim scoreline, an early goal, but they hung on. And it was a, a highly kind of fractious affair, wasn't it? Well, it was, Gabby, yeah. There were seven bookings and Michael Oliver just about kept control because in the second half, it was the feet were flying. There was no doubt about that. As you said, Reading got off to a flying start, forgive the pun. Pub Regniak scored after five minutes. And the rest of the game really was a matter of could they sustain that or could West Ham, who threw three new attackers on in the second half, could they pull the, pull the game round? And that really would have been a signal for Reading. As it is... This victory, only their second, remember, in uh, 20 Premier League games has given them the three points that just make that league table a little bit more respectable. They battled very hard uh, for Brian McDermott, I must say, today. And although West Ham had plenty of possession, in the end, Reading will see it as, as a victory that was so, so vital to them. So what does this do, do you think, this result and the others today that have affected the bottom of the table? What does it do to this relegation battle? Well, I think it drags Aston Villa and Fulham into it for a start, Gabby. Um, anybody that thinks it was all cut and dried uh, with the bottom three and maybe Southampton uh, is, is now completely wrong. Wigan have shown that they can do what they usually do and battle their way out of trouble. Reading have won. QPR play tomorrow, a home game against Liverpool. And if you look at the teams above them, there'll be some very, very nervous people around. I mean, the boys have already discussed Aston Villa. They are right in trouble. And Fulham's current record, is it one win in 12? and another home defeat. They're not out of it either. And I actually think Newcastle still need a few points. So it's going to be a very exciting second half to the season and there's going to be a lot of nervous football played, in my opinion. Happy New Year, Motti. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is one of the big results of the day, isn't it? You know, For them to get three points, what it might do for them as well in terms of a launch pad, because they've yeah. certainly needed mm. that kickstart, you know, which you felt... They weren't getting. They weren't getting those. They were getting some some goals, but they were conceding so many goals as well, weren't they? At least a clean sheet. Their other win came against Everton, which is quite surprising because Everton had a great start. They drew nil nil last at uh, Boxing Day to stop a run of seven defeats in a row. That's the, this is the third clean sheet of the season. That's the most important thing, I think, because you were saying that that's what Villa need. Yeah, absolutely. Just a, a foundation to start <laughs> because it, it's, so, it's so basic. When the manager says we defend from the front, we do everything to keep a clean sheet. Then you know. You know, anyone's capable of scoring one goal. And, yeah. you know, they battled hard today. It's always a, a, a touchy affair, Tetchit's game, because, because, because the Jimmy Kebe thing, what happened was it last, last, last season, um, West Ham and, and, and uh, Reading, he put his knee on the ball and, you know, Collison got sent off. And it always seems to be the two teams, when they come together, it's quite... That's why seven bookings and loads of incidents and, um, yeah, it got a bit... See, I didn't know about, the, uh, I didn't know about the Kebe thing yeah. until Brighty told me. And then every time I looked up at the screen, there, oh. was, there was niggles. There was All the time. Heads, heads was pushing and yeah. shoving and, you know, 
The atmosphere in the game must be fantastic. And it may have suited them that. Yeah, completely. Yes, of course. The the fans react to that as well. Mm. Okay. Well, uh, the team who've undoubtedly uh, come off worse today in this relegation battle uh, would be Aston Villa. Manager Paul Lambert talking to Martin Fisher now. Well, Paul, in the end, uh, another horror show in terms of more goals conceded and more Mm. points dropped. No, as I said, you can't start the game we did and lose uh, lose a goal after about two minutes, especially at home. It's no... It's no, um, no great by any standards, but as I said, the only spell we had, I think, was about 20 minutes of the, of the first half where we, we looked ourselves, but the second goal was really poor and um, from a throw-in from, from, from Wigan. But as I said, we've got a lot of injuries at the minute as well, which certainly doesn't help us. And um, as I said, we we'll certainly know we're in a fight now, that's for sure. Did we see how fragile the confidence is here as soon as that, uh, that goal went in? No, I'm not so sure, because I said, I think, for about 20 minutes of that first half or so, 25 minutes, we looked at ourselves. So, when the second goal goes in, it, you think, oh, hang on a minute, let's see, see what's going to happen now. So, um, but you've just got to keep going, you just can't, you just can't uh, stop trying to do the right things. Two goals in quick succession the second half, of course. It's then 3-0, 30 minutes to go, and already, for some supporters, it's too much. Can you understand those that left? No, absolutely. Honestly, I really can. As I said, but it's, um, I'm a manager of a pretty team. It's my responsibility, so I'll, I'll uh, take it. So, um, I can't fault the last for effort, but I understand. They could have been brilliant with me since I've been here. That's one thing I can't ever say anything against them. I can understand the frustration and, and, and uh, leaving at 3-0. So, um, but as I said before, I pick a team. It's my responsibility. Does that sound like a man who, is, you know, he's, he's, he wants to keep do the right thing, he wants to keep doing the right thing? Is he, has he got the fight, do you think, to take them through? And has perhaps he got the money in January well, to strengthen? I, I'm sure he's got the fight. He said he learned a lot from being at Borussia Dortmund uh, about the, not, 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 the need of mm. not to panic. Um, after the Chelsea game, I, went to, I was at that game, I went to the press conference and he was very honest. The same he was there, where he wouldn't blame the players. He said the crowd had been great, the players had given me everything they've got. But Dion intimated a short while ago that there comes a time for the players to hold their hands up and say we haven't been good enough we have not been doing it um he's trying everything he can and you can just see that with the injury list they have and the inexperience they have in the team it's a no win you have to go out in january and you have to get a few players just to stop the rot and give the squad a little bit of a boost because where's the boost coming from now when fans leave with 20 odd minutes to go and the gates are dropping at villa as well just notice that you know it is. It's disappointing for, for a club of that size to be in a situation they are and conceding goals like they are. But I'll stick to what I say. I think he's backed his players and he's backed his players and he's trying to protect the young footballer mm-hmm. so they don't go under even more the pressure. But I think sometimes you've got to put pressure on your players. How can you deal with the pressure that I'm going to put on you to get me out of this mess as a manager and as a club? Guys, stay with me. I know you will. It's been great so far this afternoon. A reminder, you can get all the day's goals from the Football League tonight at midnight which comes on after Match of the Day. But that's it from us here on BBC One Uh, for this afternoon. As I say, thank you to Dion and Mark, who've been fantastic company all afternoon. They're staying with me. For more reaction on the red button and on BBC Sport till six, do join us if you can. If not, have a great New Year. See you on the first.